How's it going, everyone? Wayne the Unknown here, and welcome back to another episode of Cosplay Con Talk, where we basically discuss everything pertaining to the cosplay community and conventions. I'm joined here by Jay Cos for another episode of Get to Know That Cosplayer. How are we doing, Jay? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I am doing relatively well. Relatively? Well, it's better than bad, right? <laughs> Can't argue with that. Yeah. So, um, basically, with, uh, with I'm sure you're familiar, talk about what it's like being a cosplayer out, you know, at cons and outside of cons, stuff like that. Cosplays you've done, advice and all that. Yeah, yeah. Through. Um, so to begin, <laughs> how long have you been cosplaying for? Uh, so I started in 2011, but oh, I didn't wow. go to my first. Yeah, I didn't go to my first convention until 2020, uh, 2012. So you're so, in the category. You're in that category, as I put it, cosplay veteran. You've yeah, basically. you've been doing this for ten plus years, and you've yeah definitely seen the change of the cosplay and convention scene. I even I even saw it before because I've always been in anime my whole life. So I like had friends who were into costuming when I was in high school, like back in the mid twenty two uh, thousands, like twenty five, twenty oh five, things oh, wow. like that. So I knew cosplayers from back then. Wow. So. So yeah. you so you you've 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 like cosplayed for ten years, and and see there and I, you know before I continue, there's nothing wrong with that. You may have never done it prior, but if you've known about it, I still count. I still kind of count that. Yeah, like okay. I've <laughs> I've I've been doing I've been cosplaying since 2017, but I've known about it since 2009 when like it was becoming a mainstream thing here in the states. Yeah, back back when back when anime and stuff started becoming normal. Back when like people like you know Yaya Han, Jessica yeah. Nibri, Kamoya Cosplay yeah. were becoming big. Um, so you've been cosplaying for ten plus years. Um, what was your very first convention and what was your very first cosplay back in 2012? If you can so, remember that far back. So in to- in 2012. So since we're talking about the first convention, I'll just go through those ones instead. Um, because I did stuff before that, at like at at work and stuff at Halloween. But so in 2012, uh, it was SoccerCon was my very first one. And I know you know what that one is. Yep, it's a it's a yeah. pretty well known anime convention yeah. up in. It's literally uh, the it's literally back in Seattle. the biggest. It's the biggest anime convention in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. So, um, up there but, with Kamori Khan. Yeah, but I did three costumes that year. So, nice. I did Marluxia from Kingdom Hearts, uh, Advent Children Cloud, and Squall from Final Fantasy VIII. Nice, Marluxia. He's the one with the pink hair, right? Yeah, and the big from scythe. from uh, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Yeah, well, he, he ended up appearing in three too as well, but oh yeah, because they brought him back. But yeah, and you said Squall from Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, nice. Uh, which version of Squall? His student uniform or his uh, the the regular the one everyone does? Oh, his oh the, his uh, his the ja- bomber his... jacket one. Okay, yeah. nice. Um, what was it like going to Soccer Con back in 2012? Very overwhelming, <laughs> like crazy overwhelming, like. Like I had to go sit down sometimes because like I was I get claustrophobic at panels. I learned that there. <laughs> uh we had to leave panels and go somewhere big and opened. Like they have the big lobby area on the nice. fourth floor. I had to go there to like So your so your cool first down. con was a big con. You just you didn't yeah. want, you don't want to go to these <laughs> yeah, small the cons. Big, yeah, yeah, the big anime con you, from you... up here. You didn't want to go to those small cons. You thought, you know, I'm ready. I can do this. Well, I was supposed to go with friends the year before that. Uh, and a lot of stuff with work happened that I couldn't go. So I was already planning to go. Um, so that's what, what... Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> so this is a question I usually would ask later. Um, And I, it's something I always ask. What advice would you want to give to someone who wants to go to a big con for the first con? They don't want to do them lo- the local small cons. They were like, I can do a big con i'm a big man i'm a big kid oh i've I've had a lot of those um my big advice to people who want to do that i would just say do it it's actually not as bad as people think like like for me i get i got overwhelmed just because of the claustrophobia thing a lot of people don't have that oh, so no. big cons you're like shoulder to shoulder <laughs> yeah this one you actually aren't that much because there's so much room uh in the panels you are because that's just how they make the seating oh yeah but no. The regular, like, day-to-day walking around, it's nothing like that. Especially if you go outside, because that's all open. The park is completely open, and there's tons of people there, but it doesn't feel full. Like, it feels like a busy day at a park, basically. Nice. So you don't get overwhelmed as easily if you just walk outside real quick. Nice. I don't think I've ever asked this. Where is Sakura Khan in Seattle Hilda? I don't think I've ever asked where... At what the, the Convention lo- Center. Oh, okay. Yeah, How- so it's now called the Seattle Convention Center. They changed, I think, two years ago. 
Okay. So and I imagine Washington it's State. I imagine it's a pretty pretty big convention center. It's four stories. It's well, it's the main the main stuff is four stories, and then there's two extra stories. And the cons just on the first four floors. It is mostly, and then the the fifth floor is just like random crap, you know, just like stuff going on, nothing really going on. And then the sixth floor is the gaming. So that's where they have like the the Guitar Hero Ooh. and the arcades and stuff like that. <laughs> and then there's the really big open. Um, panel rooms in there so the, the ones that can fit like 300 people in them i may have to go to soccer con just because you said there's a big arcade you do oh yeah oh yeah no they have they have all the good stuff there <laughs> they, fun to catch like they have they have like the marvel vs. capcom which is my favorite uh-huh. they have all the they have the tekken ones they have the mortal Kombat. they're all cabinets too oh yeah so like they, have, they have consoles they have consoles but you, a had, lot you, of it you had you had me at like classic arcade right there nice yeah. um <laughs> So let's see. Um, what other so um, what other cons have you attended uh, in the past few years aside from Soccer Con? So I always go to Komori Con every year. I don't know you know that one. That's where I found you. <laughs> and and um, uh, so I've gone to a couple smaller ones. Uh, there's Chibi Chibi Con. I've, I've 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 heard of I've heard of Chibi Chibi a few times on this on this show. Yeah, it's like a twelve hour, thirteen hour con. Really small. It's in it's at um Evergreen so, State College. So it's, it's a one day con then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's usually like 10 a.m. or 12 p.m. somewhere around that to midnight. Okay. It's yeah. it's pretty standard, you know. There's nothing wrong yeah. with just one day cons. It's, you know. You no, don't but have it's, the... a, it's free at a college. So. Oh, it's a free con. Okay. I yeah, you don't have to pay at all. To, I may have to there's go. All, but okay, also in Shelton, there's BlazerCon, which is about six or seven hours long, maybe eight. Blazer and con. they're they're in they're in they're in a college in Shelton, and they're also free. See, I like I like the yeah. free cons because. You don't have to pay for the tickets. You you don't have yeah. to wait in long lines. That's that's <laughs> what I like about that too. And you don't have to worry about like, oh, I have to bring all this luggage and all this stuff at the paper hotel. You don't have to do any of that. Just I go mean, down it, there and if, come back. I mean, sometimes it doesn't. If you're like traveling from a far distance, it doesn't hurt to get there the day before and then leave the well, day yeah. after because like staying like an Airbnb or something. <laughs> but if you're like if you're close by, you can be like okay, I'm just like I can just go there and be there and just leave and get back home like in the, like in a couple minutes or so. Yeah, exactly. Nice. I've never heard of BlazerCon. So what is BlazerCon? Because I've never heard of that just to, until you mentioned it. So uh, it, th- it's very similar to Chibi Chibi Con. Um, they're both basically the same thing, just run by different. They're 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 run by like a, it's an anime club or whatever. Oh, like so it's, it's it's run by like the same like group of people, but different name, kind of like how. Death... No, 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 no. So it's so it's actually so um, Chibi Chibi Con is run by uh, the anime club at evergreen state college and then the one at BlazerCon is whatever their anime club is at that college so they're both they're both separate but they're like the same kind of thing so it's like it's like two people with the same idea nice kind of like how down here locally there's uh there's anna medford and metal arc anna medford was owned was owned by a different company but then the main con company colossus girl entertainment took them on oh yeah okay yeah so uh, basically, all it is though is like a dealer's hall room or an artist alley. There's not even really dealers; it's all artist alley because it's all local stuff. Okay, and it's kinda, just local artists and like kinda, people who go kinda to Kind of like, kind of like Sac Con. It's just basically a giant. Um, yeah, it's a giant. No, I don't want to use the word flea market, but it's, it's just yeah, a giant. It's close enough. It's a it's a giant bazaar where you're just basically buying yeah. stuff, and there may be a few um, uh, special guests here and there. Yeah, these don't even have guests. Because <laughs> it, since it's just the club, they don't have money. It, it's it's so, it's a it's 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 a fan run con, which there's nothing yeah, wrong yeah. with. I mean, I, most I, of them are. Soccer con is technically fan run; it's all volunteers. But they get so, some pretty big. They get some pretty big names, though. Oh yeah, and, well, and it's then, because and, it's because they actually sell tickets or badges. Oh yeah, no, and so, see, and see, I mean, I, and I and I, you know, I completely understand why some of the free small free cons can't always afford special guests, but sometimes. You may find out so and so who voice so and so lives locally in the area, and they just want to exactly. come by to see. Yeah, and nice. if they if they do find that kind of stuff, they would they'll be like, hey, if you guys want to come and have people pay for some autographs, you guys can come in and do that, and they'll let them. Nice. But so far, they haven't, but they will allow it. Nice. So, um, what other sm- what other bigger cons have you attended? Because I've seen, I think you, uh, I've seen you. <laughs> packs. T- I, yeah, packs. Yeah. Um, yeah, been to four now, I think. You know, I want to ask about that. I don't think I've ever asked me. <laughs> I figured that was what, going to come what's up. What's your What's your experience with PAX? Because I know PAX is. I'm not, so I'm PAX never going looking? back again. Where's PAX? PAX is the same place as Soccer Con, same building. 
PAX. Okay. I, I've heard yeah. some mixed reviews on PAX. Yeah. So I'm not going back. We're not dissing PAX, by the way. I just. No, no, no. Like it's nothing against PAX itself. Like I, the other ones I hear are amazing. It's this one specifically that makes me mad. <laughs> so they, they close off a lot of the outside. And so I, I film a lot. So I, I like do all the, the music I've seen, videos. I've, I've seen the, your yeah. vlogs and everything. So yeah. so it's really hard to film when all the lights are turned off. <laughs> so I try to do a lot of the cosplay filming outside. They don't let us outside. Like there's there's um there, there's a there's an area that like you may have seen in some of my videos where where we're like walking out into the big courtyard area. There's mm -hmm. like a big concrete courtyard with the gazebo. That area and that's like it. The rest of the park is off limits. What? If we there, it's barricaded off. You know, you know those metal barricades that they use at concerts. Yeah, it's those and a guard. And if you leave those, they tell you to go all the way back around the building and go back in the one door that's opened. Even though you have like a wristband and stuff. Yep. Or you know, or a a, a, yep. a lanyard thing. Yeah, we literally, um, twenty nineteen when they started that, we saw somebody go out the barricades just to say something to somebody, and they wouldn't let him back in. It was right there. He literally watched him talk to his friend real quick. And wouldn't let him back in. Again, Pax, we're not dissing you, but yeah. I feel like I but, feel like I feel like some some of these bigger cons kind of I don't want to like I said, I'm not dissing these cons, but I feel like sometimes staff, volunteers, you need to be trained a little bit better. Yeah. And you know, it's not always necessarily like I don't know. I, I don't want to go too deep into that. I kind of did that with <laughs> Yeah, it. we yeah, we probably shouldn't. I kind of did that with a little idea. I kind of did that with I yeah. anyway. <laughs> uh, what Moving other, on. What other big cons have you gone to? Because like I said, I, I, uh, I, I, I see, I, I get notifications about your vlogs and everything. Yeah, I know. I know you subscribe to my channel, and I do it to yours too. So I see yours all the time. Um, you know, I honestly, off the top of my head, can't think of any. I like on my website, I have a little area for it. So let me go see which ones I actually have on here. Uh oh, SummerCon. Yeah, Washington. I saw your. Yeah, uh, okay. I saw, so. I saw your anime. Uh, you saw your AMV video for um, uh, Washington Summer Con for this year. What was? Yeah. What was? What was that? What's Washington Summer Comic Con? What is that like? And um, okay, so it's what did you, way and different. Did, and who it did you cosplay different. for that con? Oh, okay, so that one. Um, in my vlog, I actually am. You can see all three of them. Um, uh, I was Rimaru from that time I got reincarnated as a slime and took it off almost immediately because that was really hard Rima, to film with. Rima, Rimaru. Yeah. Okay, I, I've seen a few. I've seen a few. I've seen a few of uh, that cosplay. Yeah, I, I have. I only have a few pictures because I I don't like wearing it if I can help it. Uh, also, I sold it to my friends, so um, I was borrowing it. Um, and then uh, so that was on Friday, and then Saturday I was Sora. So yeah, know, I remember. I think I saw you take like a vi a quick video with uh, Jim Cummings yeah. or something. Yeah, I did that with Jim Cummings and Bill Farmer. Nice. So I got to be like I was Sora talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then on um Sunday I was uh I didn't know I was going to be able to go on Sunday. I texted my boss while we were uh le like right before we left while we were eating before we left the on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I was like uh, I was like, "Hey, I just need to know right now am I coming in tomorrow or not?" And he's like, "Nah, take the day off. Go to go to your thing." I was like, nice. "Sweet." So that night I bought the Sunday tickets. <laughs> nice. So, um I was red from Pokémon Red and Blue. Nice. That's like my that's my main Sunday costume because that's easy to get home in. Oh, yeah, no. I I feel like I feel like, you know, the first or last day, you should probably wear, yeah. like, a comfort cosplay because sometimes if you're traveling, you're exhausted. You don't want to put on the body paint. Yeah. You don't want to put on the big, bulky armor. You, like, <sighs> I have want no to idea. casual. I have no idea how I can see on Sunday so many armor costumes. Like, how are you getting home? Yeah. Like, sometimes, <laughs> I mean, if you live in the area. Yeah. It's crazy. But we have to drive there and back because they have free parking. <laughs> so, nice. uh, it's, so it's at the Puyallup Fairgrounds. And it, they can only use the fairgrounds for the fair. So the rest of the year, there's nothing happening. So there's two buildings that they use. Uh, one is a mattress firm, sh uh, Showplex area. And that's where all of the dealers and artists and all the um, guests and stuff are. Or the, the small guests, like the anime ones and the video game ones are there. And then they have the celebrities like Star Wars or they had William Shatner this year. They, all that there's another building called the pavilion that's behind it yeah and uh, they all uh, go there yeah a, a, a con uh, the con here uh they uh one of the local cons here they have that too yeah um what's the price for for those who are cons considering on wanting to go next cheap. year for like like how cheap we <laughs> like talking? 30 bucks like 30 bucks for friday 30 bucks for saturday and like 15 for sunday and do they do like yeah. a weekly pass thing or do you have to pay each time you go? Oh, you just uh 
Well, I mean, it's only for it's only once a year. So you just whenever they put them up, they don't sell out. They don't get enough people to sell out. So I'm, su- I'm surprised with such well known names. Like you think people yeah, want to like think. flock? Yeah. Uh, apparently, some of the trying to get to those guests is like near impossible. So oh, you know, like yeah. we had Jason David Frank this year, and his rest lines were like four re- hours long. Rest in peace, man. Yeah, rest in peace to him, the OG. Oh yeah, but. Yeah, it was like I, a three-hour line. Oh, I be, I believe it. Yeah. I've seen con lines for special guests. I a con I went to a few years back. Roger Craig Smith. Me and my oh sister, god. Me and my sister. I wish. Me, me and my sister were in that line for almost two hours because people had like big trunks of stuff for him to sign mainly so they can yeah, sell it on eBay. They're but, not supposed to do that. But no, I mean, I I, I won't doubt JDF's line was that long because he's a, such a big name and such a. It, would you would Wasp Summer Con be like a big name con or like a medium size? Like I would I would consider a medium. Okay. So it's small. Have you been to Comoric Con yet? I'm going actually in 2023 because I plan on doing. Well, some, you'll see me there. So I plan I plan <laughs> on doing I plan on doing a convention showcase episode for that con. Oh, nice. Year. So if I see you there. <laughs> oh yeah. Definitely. Um, but it's smaller than that, but it's not by much. <laughs> Okay, because I know there's like your small local cons, and then there's like yeah. your 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 big your medium to large size con like Kamori Was, and then you got your yeah. big cons like Pax, Sakura, Wizard oh, World, yeah. Dragon and Con. A dra- I wouldn't, I wouldn't opinion, even I wouldn't my, even put Pax and Soccer Con near each other. In, in, in my opinion, Dragon Con is up there. Oh yeah, no, that is the up there. It's it's up there with San Diego San Diego San Diego Comic Con and yeah, Anime, Anime Expo. Expo. Yeah, <laughs> we both knew that one was coming. Oh yeah. <laughs> So, um, a, a cosplay question I want to ask: What are your thoughts on thrifting for your cosplay, especially if you're a cosplayer on a budget or you're wanting to get into cosplay? I do it all the time. Literally, my cloud costumes, or my main one, the the one that um from the remake, the the clothing part of it, I literally got at thrift stores. Well, I mean, I ended up buying a shirt because uh the ones I found at the thrift store I didn't like as much, but you can literally find that stuff at thrift stores. So you mean? I mean, I'm gonna. Sh- I mean, I'm gonna show a full picture, but uh, yes, that, that one. <laughs> that is, it's it's really well, it's really well made. Did you do the wig yourself, or do you have yes. that commission? Yes, uh, uh, I do all my wigs myself. I think I remember seeing some in one of your earlier videos. You did like a, a cloud how to video. Yeah, yeah. That's so really I um I have a man. I actually have a playlist called work vlogs. I didn't know what else to call them, so I called them that. that and all my is, wigs are in there. That wig is detailed. Mine going into the process of how you did his wig to make it look. Like it came yeah, out of yeah, the video game. So, so the the I only fit two brands of wigs. <laughs> so, I if if someone wants to go on Amazon and buy a cheap wig, do it. <laughs> if it'll fit your head, they won't fit my head. So, uh, I go to artowigs.com or good. epiccosplay.com. Good, good and websites. Yeah, they're they're the top two wig sellers in the country. So, or in the planet, really. Um, so I got I get all my spiking wigs at Arda, and that's the Magnum Long. I don't remember which color it is. I think that one's platinum blonde or something. I don't remember. But um, because I've had that wig for a few years now, like since 2015 or 16. I just keep restyling it. (laughs) And uh, I only use a lot of people use uh, like different techniques like back combing or um, some people will even make structured wigs out of like foam and then put the hair on them or something. I don't know how to do any of that. I used to style wig, uh, actually like actual real hair for my friends and stuff back in like high school and middle school. So I got all my techniques from that. And then I learned how to cut wigs correctly because they're not the same as regular hair. Mm-hmm. And I just use hairspray and a blow dryer. And, just, and then obviously I cut them. But, but, it's, well, I mean, if I, if I ever had to yeah. plan on doing Soldier 76 again, I know who to go to. Yeah. <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you commissioned wigs for other yeah. people? Yes, I actually do. I have a commission thing on my website. I will definitely it's make sure it's closed right now. But you know, I have. I'll, I'll make sure it, with your permission if I can't put, if I put that in the link description yeah. link below. Okay, it's in, it's in all my descriptions. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's also people want templates. That's where I send them. No, nice. I have free templates for all my um all my tutorials. Nice. So. Now I want to ask about since we kind of got into the props. Um, yeah, yeah. I want to ask about your uh, keyblade in the back. What this was one? the pro- yeah? What was the process that went into that big boy? Because that. So Oof. how much does yeah. that thing weigh? Nothing. It literally weighs basically nothing. Oh wow, that's really de- what blade so, what key blade is that again? So this is ever after you get it from the Tangled World in Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh, okay. I remember that. I remember I was actually that was one of my favorite 
Ever after. That was my favorite world in the game. Oh, yeah. Ever after Keyblade Kingdom Hearts. Okay, did it yeah. um, image I just well, you know for uh, I'll be showing like a bigger picture, but this Oh yeah, obviously. I can send is... you pictures of everything. Yep, that one. Wow, oh, how long did yeah. that thing to take you to make? Because you Two know weeks. What... <laughs> that's impressive. What materials did yeah. you use? Uh so it's EVA foam layered together and then sanded down with the dowel in it. Basically it. I, I know like what dowels are to are to keep it together. Yeah, it well it um it's so that it it's stiff <laughs> okay i can't what's it like trying to what's it like when you're going like on a like you know a long con trip like you know from here to like california or something uh, um, i don't <laughs> well i'm just saying if you do like a long con trip what's the process of like packing packaging that yeah, thing so, so it like doesn't break or anything uh if i can find bubble wrap big enough i'll try to use that and then cover it in a blanket or two blankets or three whatever it takes <laughs> um my buster sort of takes like two or three blankets oh that's that, um, that beast like I try to use the throw blankets since they're um, oh, like softer. The, oh, like okay, I know what you're yeah the fleece talking. ones. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, because um the the stiffness of the fabric in like a quilt or mm -hmm. a um or a comforter mm -hmm. uh can can actually bend things. Ooh. So I've learned that the hard way. Um, and actually with my Reinhardt sword, which I know we didn't talk about it, but Reinhardt all, sword all bent up. Reinhardt, what's who's that? It's a ReZero. Oh, you because you said you cosplay as Reinhardt. Okay. Yes, Reinhardt, but it's hard to see, but you can actually see it's all bent up. But okay, I can. I can yeah. 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 Uh, Bubble wrap did that. Oof. At Comoricon, that's how I brought it down there. Um, I guess now, uh, what advice for those for those who are like have like a big prop like a sword? What would you uh, say the best way to, you know? keep it safe on your way to travel so it doesn't like get damaged or something because i know sometimes cosplayers well, will like have their stuff mailed to them at the hotel yeah well that's what i was gonna bring up um the best way to do it is if you can safely mail it down depending on how far it is if you're taking a plane you can't bring that just mm -mm. period so oh, no. you have to mail it's, it down. It's, it's considered a weapon yeah well even then if even if you could bring it it would break so there's no reason to but if you can uh, make it so that it can break down and go in a suitcase. That if that's not always possible, but if you can, like spears can do that pretty easily. Oh yeah, um, but but like that keyblade, that's not going to be possible. No, there's no so, way. You can, there's no way you can take that apart. That's just one whole big yeah, piece. So going on a plane, you'd have to mail that. Uh, what I would do is try to make a friend down there first and mail it to them, and see if they can bring it to conference. Oh yeah, no, because uh, especially a lot of people have that con crunch where they're trying to where they need like yeah. mail because they can't. They can't finish it at home because there's like two or three days from the con, so they go to the hotel and try to hope, you know, pay yeah. that ex pay that extra shipping to try to finish their cosplay. Exactly, and getting it shipped to a hotel can sometimes not work right because the hotel doesn't really take care of your stuff. No, so they don't know what it is. They might just toss it in a room somewhere, and that could break it. Next thing but, you know, but a friend would know what it is, and they would know to be careful. Next thing you know, your Buster sword got shipped or something. Exactly, and the, the if you're driving down there though. Just wrap it, <laughs> bubble wrap, blankets, whatever. For a Komori Con for the Buster Sword, I just put it in in a couple of uh, throw blankets and called it good. It nice. survived, so no, nice. it had to go. It had to go like between me and the driver. <laughs> well, I mean, the sword is like what five foot, six foot long. It's just I made it as tall as me, so it's five six. Jeez, oh, yeah, it's crazy. Well, five seven in the in the boots, but nice. Yeah, so I made it that tall. Now, if you now if you ever plan on doing the Buster Sword again, do you plan on doing Cloud's version from the remake where he has the materia in the socket? Is. Oh, wait, it does. Yeah, it's got red and green. I I was gonna make them light up, but I didn't have time. Because originally I was making oh, this for yeah. Okay, I see him now. <laughs> yeah, originally I was making it for SoccerCon 2020, and I didn't have time to to put all the lights in, so I had to finish it without oh, it, and then they canceled. I, I can't, oh no, because go. Yeah. So, I can't. Yeah. Wait, I can't wait to see that thing with the LED. How did I have you make... to remake the? I have to remake the entire thing to do that. Oh, did, um, what did, what kind of material? <laughs> pun intended. What kind of material did you use for the material? It's the material, um, the material plastic material. ornaments. So the, the ornaments that can split in half. They're like one and a half inch. Or something. Oh, and you painted and you painted. Uh, yeah, I painted the inside like spotty red and green, hey, and good. then. And comes, in super handy glued if, them in place. comes in handy if you ever need if you ever want to make a uh, dragon ball yeah uh i would rather i would much rather have those resin casted because you can put the stars in them oh but, yeah and they won't have the seam on them but 
is yeah, they they work just fine for Dragon Balls too. But those look. I can't again. I can't wait to see if when you redo the sword to see the LEDs because I've seen ever since the remake came out. Yeah, the remaster, the remake remastered. I've seen people uh, do Tifa's gloves, what has material yeah. on it. Yeah, like and uh, I actually made my friend's Tifa material <laughs> material on her thing. Nice. She had a she bought one, and we had to remake that whole brace thing because it looked like garbage. <laughs> so I had to do that too. Um, we couldn't fit batteries or a light in that one though. But and we just used what came with it. We just ripped the gems off and kind of okay. put it in the thing. Uh, I'm looking at a, a better a better picture of of your <laughs> of your cloud that has both the red and uh, green materia. Yeah. That's yeah. um want to give your friend a shout out, whoever who if 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 you know. No, I did that. Oh, you did that for her. Yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So uh you're so you're looking at the Tifa one, right? I don't know where the Tifa one's at, but okay. um, you got it. Well no, there's because I did, I did it for Tifa. Okay, I'm looking at the I, Tifa I made, now. Okay, yeah, I made her Tifa stuff. You made her Tifa armor and everything. Yeah. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. She bought the rest of the costume, but the armor looked horrible. It was like flat vinyl. It, it looked really it, bad. It, it, it's your standard typical. You yeah. buy it off like yeah eBay or something. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, I don't know where she bought it. I don't really care. <laughs> but... Um. So another prop I want to talk about your mm. uh, shield hero book shield. Yeah. How did you go about making that? So I assume because you're talking about the glowing stuff because we were just talking yes, about Yes, I'm talking so, about the glowing orb. <laughs> so like all the other stuff, I don't want to keep you know saying it, but I have tutorials for all this stuff. Um, that's all um, EVA foam, but it's a different kind of foam. It's called What the Foam from a guy called Cosplay Apprentice. And it's got I, like a rubber, it's got like a rubber I, material. I, I, I have heard of him. Yeah, we, yeah, we I kind of know who we, we talk sometimes. So, um, but it, it's like it, his his little company or whatever is mm -hmm. the only place that can sell them, and he they're they're his thing. You can't like um, buy you can't like buy anywhere else. Yeah, he has his own Amazon listing, and nobody else can sell it. Hey, what's it called? What the foam? What the? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love it. And the the um the T is like a cross. <laughs> That's like one of his symbols. Nice. It's like it's like a plus sign. It's really funny. Um, but it's like forty dollars, and you get like. They're they're set eleven by seventeen, I think, and you get two of two millimeter, four millimeter, and six millimeter, and they're color coded. And it's not like your standard EVA foam, or if you yeah, want to go, if you want to, if you want, if you want to go the cheap route, um, gym mats. Yeah, I mean, if they bend a lot easier, so that was the reason that I used it because it doesn't bend as easy after it's all like heat I mean, formed that, and painted. That, that comes in handy, especially like yeah. when you're doing cloud, because cloud's got that big shoulder thing yeah. right there and it, i made that before i ever bought any what the foam which is like i might redo it out of that now what the, what the foam is your best friend now basically basically i have like four boxes in the other room because i just i love it <laughs> <laughs> and he just started selling giant sheets so you can make like plate armor and stuff out of it i'm gonna do that nice. but um the book is made completely out of that to make it stiff and it's got two elastic bands on the back for the arm and then uh the, the hole is just cut out and there's one of those ornaments just put in there. It's just a different size, obviously. This and, is a, like a, and, a, and a green – and how many uh, green LED lights? Uh, there's actually none. Well, I mean there's technically an LED light back there. It's a puck light or a disc light that you, you press it and it turns on. Oh, okay. And yeah. you just put it inside so, the thing? Yeah, I just I just put it in there. It has a remote. So I just I – just Oh, I made it. So I made a little casing for it, glued that in, and then just the remote turns it on. Off. Oh, that yeah. is cool. And the way that the way that I put the strap on there, and the way it goes through, it goes all the way three hundred and sixty. So it goes. So there's a little bit of the strap inside. You can just fit the remote right there. Oh, that is. Yeah. You can actually a, fit your phone and wallet in there too. That's actually some pretty cool advice, though, too. Yeah. So it's like your personal yeah. little. It's like your personal, uh, like a uh, carrying case too. Yeah. He well, he always carries a backpack with him. The one mm -hmm. who I made it for. And it's one of my friends. So he always carries a backpack. But since he has a cape on, it's really hard to get to it. So he puts his stuff in there if he can. Nice. That I've is... made I've made three of the uh, Nafumi shields already. So and they're all done the same way. That is I gotta make yeah. sure actually right. But that, the, that the, the front the front of that one actually pulls open with magnets. So you can get into it. Nice. That's... And they're yeah, there's a magnet on each corner and they're um neodymium magnets, so they're super strong. Ooh, very nice. Yeah. So now I want to talk about some of the cosplays you've done. Some of your uh, favorite, some of your favorite, oh, yeah. least favorite, and like, did I just actually cosplay that? 
Yeah. So I don't have any of those actually, which is funny. So um, it's well, it's kind of it's kind of that same question. What's that one cosplay you did that it was kind of a one and done? Like a friend asked you to, you wanted to kind of know what it was like, but you've never done it ever since. Uh, technically none. Um, the only one that I would say would be what I would talk about in a horror story. Okay. So well, if we we'll, want to get into that, we can. Oh but... yeah, we'll we'll, we'll we'll get into that after <laughs> yeah. the cosplay. The cosplay. It's like, it's like I want to stay on topic. <laughs> You know, uh, so. What's that one cosplay you haven't done in so long you would love to bring back? Oh my god, uh, probably Marluxia. He's my favorite Kingdom Hearts character. So, and his and his hair is like, yeah. I know I know it's like this, and then it kind of goes down. Yeah. And he, it, it has yeah, it, it's like a one, layered. Thing. And he has, he has the one. A he's a, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember fighting him in Kingdom Hearts uh, Chain of yeah. Memories for the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, and it sucked. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, but uh, I actually like made his site. I can send you the picture of that too. But I I. In, I had it in 2012, like I said before, but I only had like Chain of Memories printed off cards that my friend printed for me. Like she made them in Photoshop and printed them and sent them to me. Nice. And because I, I didn't have the time to make the scythe back then because I had I'd thought last minute, hey, I'm just going to order an organization. His scythe his, his, his scythe is pretty big too. Yeah. Yeah, it's huge. It's bigger than he is. So I made it like 6'4", I think, or something like that, or 6'3". And then it was like maybe three and a half feet wide, like from end to to tip just a bit smaller than ruby's scythe yeah exactly and uh i broke it the day the day i came back from that convention oh, uh, but no. in, 20, so in, 20, in 2014 i had redone it i had a better coat like an, an actual commissioned coat that now one of my other friends has and i made my own chain hardware and then i got a better wig and um then i made the scythe for that and then on the way home when i got here i live upstairs so i had to turn into my stairs and i hit the wall and it snapped in half Oh, the no. the blade snapped in. It's only it was only um insulation foam, so the blade snapped in half. Oof. I was like, luckily it didn't do that while I was using it. <laughs> but I can send you pictures of that too. I, that's one of my favorite cosplays I've ever done. Nice. So I would love to do it again. I have an organization coat. We just have to get new hardware for them because they broke. Makes sense. Yeah, um, broke. what's been? What's your? It's a question I sometimes always forget to ask. What is the? Aside from the cosplays we talked about, do you have any big build cosplays like it took you months to make? Uh, other than Cloud, not really. Um, I've been focusing a lot on smaller costumes so that I can film. So, but there's not a whole like we we're trying to do monster hunter stuff, but Ooh. it's just like it's and just like not happening. <laughs> their the ar their armor is like uh, since with the the new Monster Hunter game came out, the one that came out Monster Hunter World, like the yeah. big the big wet the big armor and like yeah i have to give props to kamoi cosplay for her being able to cosplay oh, yeah or anyone who does any it, monster like the big bulky or like when they have like the big uh the big the big yeah. leg prop for food it's crazy we we saw some at kamori con 2017 and they won the contest i think i actually heard about that it's crazy uh, there was a, oh there in my in my pax video there's a, there's a monster hunter cosplayer in there nice got this giant uh he's got the the one that switches into a into an axe or whatever and whatever those are called i don't know what they're called <laughs> nice but, um i guess any bigger any big props you've made aside from cloud sword and malicious sight <laughs> um and reinhardt just sword. other cloud swords <laughs> uh so i i i have that other um advent children sword Oh, the one that like has like that just like different pieces. Yeah, it's supposed to do the whole combo. It's just not. It his, do that, his, but... his uh his cyber kinetic sword, whatever you yeah. want to call it. We just call it the fusion sword. <laughs> I, I saw that sword. I'm just like, yeah, I, I, I thinking yeah. about it. Like, if anyone, I've seen people actually make that where each individual yeah. piece comes apart. Yep, and that's insane. I'm not gonna try that. No, 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 no. Yeah. So well, I the one I have. It was originally three uh three D printed mm. and I bought it from somebody on Etsy and it was literally so heavy that I couldn't pick it up. Oh jeez. So, uh, they must have... part part of it came broken. <laughs> yeah, I so, mean that's that probably wasn't the the, the builder's fault because when yeah, you're getting no, anything wasn't. when you're getting anything shipped, there's always that chance of something breaking. Yeah, the little the little side blades that are on it, mm -hmm. they were snapped in half. So I was like, Oh that sucks. I mean I could have fixed it, but I'm not I'm not picking that thing up. So uh, I kept the 3D print from the handguard down to the mm -hmm. pommel, and then I remade the blade exactly like with the same method that I made the other sword, uh, except it, it's got a couple extra layers on it for detail, nice. obviously. 
But other oh. than that, it's exactly the same. And it and it's pressure fit so that I can take it off. Nice. Yeah. Do you have it's like really hard to get on, but I can get it back on and off. Do you like um because uh, I've seen some cloud cosplayers where they can like have like the sword on their back like Cloud nope. does. <laughs> Can't do it. Uh they're a little too heavy for that, but also I don't have a strong enough magnet for that. The strongest magnet I can find that'll work is like two hundred dollars. Oh jeez. Yeah. Um uh I would need basically an electromagnet that's like that big mm -hmm. in order in order to make it. Um that one, the the Advent Children one just can't do that because he doesn't even have a thing to do that. Uh he has a his harness has spots from all the mm -hmm. multiple pieces. Yep, yep. Um and then they all fit in his bike. Um but the the remake one, it has a it has a steel rod going through it because it's it's too heavy for a dowel. Right. Like I had a dowel in there and it was snapping, a half inch oh, dowel. Oh jeez. So like it was bending really bad. So uh, I put a steel pipe in there and even even a magnet this big mm -hmm. is not strong enough to catch that because there's so many layers. Oh jeez. Yeah. It, That's I, I'm the when I remake it, I'm thinking of putting a metal plate like as the the first underlayer, mm -hmm. like right under the details or something so that it'll catch right away to any magnet. Nice. Hopefully that'll work. Hopefully, I've seen like a mini prop version of Cloud's yeah. Advent Children's sword, where like all the p all his swords were attached by magnets, and you could just build it. It was like a mini, not yet big. Oh wow! I saw it online once. I can't imagine a big version of that because that 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 oh, would God. weigh a freaking ton. Yeah, um, I can't. I can't imagine a metal version of that, let okay. alone a three D printed one. <laughs> so before we talk about future cosplays you want to do later down the road, uh, since you're actually the first cosplay vlogger on here what is it about, like being a cosplay convention vlogger a lot more fun than people might think people are scared to vlog i've noticed it's nowhere near as scary when mm -hmm. you start doing it it's I, I, super fun i can attest to that <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but like at pax in in my vlog for my the recent pax someone was just walking by and he's like oh is that a vlog and i turned the thing to him and i was like hey yeah and he's like oh hey everybody and i was like that's <laughs> vlogging for you you know like, it people love it people love being on camera people love seeing it if they don't want to be on camera they will tell you or they'll look like they obviously don't want to no. as long as you don't film them you're fine well, always and, and always other than that it's yeah other than that it's fun and plus i feel like it gives those who can't go to a con it gives them that yes it gives them that yes that that pov experience that's literally my point like that's my entire reason for doing it no. i want to show other people what these cons are like Nice. What may? Uh, how long have you have? A, <laughs> how long have you been doing the uh, the convention vlogs for? Uh, since 2015. Nice. Yeah, Comoric on 2015 was my first one. What was what was that like? Uh... Okay, starting out is bad. <laughs> starting out, <sucks>. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but <laughs> once you, once you get used to it, I didn't have. So I had a Nikon, which is a horrible camera brand. I don't use them anymore. I, I use Canon. I have a Nikon. Don't... <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> um, they're a horrible cinematic camera um so so when i do the things like the showcasing the cosplayers everything looks really bad because their lenses aren't like as great and their color science isn't good so it depends on the light yeah 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 and while you're at a convention there's no light <laughs> so, just like there's yeah. no internet just like there's no internet yeah yeah that <laughs> i know that one way too well um but like so so when you when you vlog you're gonna want to have to have that b-roll and you want it to look good and so you got to get all the lenses and stuff. That's the problem is it costs a lot of money. Oh, it does. just, just, just to have like decent gear. Yeah. Doing that is, is very costly. Well, I literally have my cameras right behind me. Nice. <laughs> so, um, well, I was using them earlier. So, um, uh, but I was using the, uh, M3 from Canon Ooh. and it's a, the, one of their mirrorless cameras. I have actually I've seen the quality is really good. Yeah. So so that um that was up until 2020 that I was doing that. So up until right before the um uh the pandemic and stuff. And then for my birthday in 2020, my mom got me for my birthday the um uh M50 from Canon. And that's what I use now. What's the quality on that thing? Way better. It's like really what, like 20 megapixels or yeah, so I'm not a hundred I think it's a I can't remember. I think it's 24 megapixels or something. I'm not Ooh. sure. Yeah, it's really good. Um, and it's also, it's also a mirrorless camera made for video. Like it's not really, it's like, yeah, you can take pictures and stuff, but it's not made for that. It's made to film on. Nice. So, yeah. So, and it, you get, um, full HD 1080 in, um, 
30 or uh, 24, 30, and 60 frames. So I can do the slow motion stuff. Nice. Yeah. And so as long as you know how to like do filming, because like there's a lot of things in filming. Like if you want like the, it's a look cinematic, you, you want to film regular stuff in 24 frames per second, because that's like what Hollywood does. And then like the 60 frames, you you want to have all the motion blur correct and stuff. So you have to do everything and know the settings. But once you do, you just instinctly do it and you're done. So it, nice. it's it's really fun once you once you got it. The problem <laughs> is trying to do it when you have big costumes like Cloud. Oh it's yeah. It's literally not possible for me to to do it with Cloud. Yeah, I, I I've like I've thought about that's like when I do more of these convention showcases, like I'd better be, I gotta, you, I, 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 th I feel like you gotta pick your, your cosplays, it just in general, pick your cosplays wisely. I guess uh, next yeah. question is, what advice would you want to give to those who want to do like, uh, cosplay vlogs or someone who wants to do like a media coverage, like, for a yeah, con? Yeah. So, one thing would be to get business cards first off, because a lot of people that I've seen that film don't have business cards. How are we gonna find the video? So I always give someone a business card and say, hey, it's going to be on YouTube next month or later this Ooh. month or something. So people know to look out for it. And then uh, basically just know your settings on the cameras. If if your video doesn't look good, no one's going to want to watch it. Like things like this, like what we're doing right now, don't have to look good. They don't have to be high quality. I'm using like a 720p camera. Yeah, I'm using a... Yeah. I'm using an a a, a a Nanshiba 1080p camera. Yeah, this is a this is like a Logitech from like 2013. So <laughs> these don't have to look good because this is just an interview. Right. But if someone wants to see what the convention is like, you don't want it to be like 480p or something. No, you got to like 1080, yeah. 720 to 1080. And also, a lot of people don't. Re I, even I have problems with this. Telling a story with your like that's like the main thing that everyone in YouTube tells you. If you want to be a YouTuber, you got to do this. You got to tell a story. At cons, that's really hard. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people will like say, oh, I'm going to go do this. And then it'll cut. Oh, hey, we just did this. Like, well, we didn't see anything. So it's like, well, we didn't see you do anything. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't get to see the fun part. We just see the part where you tell us that you did something. And a lot of people do that. I've, I've noticed that a lot on you. I watch a lot of um, vlogs from the conventions I go to. Mm -hmm. And I notice that a lot. I'm like, these are boring. Like, it's nothing against them, but they're boring. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, and there's something wrong with, like, explaining it, but, like, yeah. having, like, some video or pictures from the con, yeah. it, it, it'll let people know, like, it'll, like, like let people know, like, oh, that, that, that's a con I want to go to, kind yeah. of thing. Or, like, like like on my um my most recent PAX one, I I had somebody film me interacting with Faye Mata, the voice actor. So, that's showing what, and then after that, I talked about what I did and showed what I got signed and all that kind of stuff. So, you you know what I mean. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, so, I get it. Yeah, nice. Um, now, um, uh, future cosplays. What are some future cosplays you would like to do? Like, there, there are either they're either in the works or there are cosplay you would like to do later down the road. So, the two main ones right now. Uh, I actually have two that I'm working on. Um, not really working on per se, but I'm going to be buying soon. Um, Albedo from um, Genshin Impact. And who's he? Again? So, uh, uh, do you play Genshin Impact? No, but I've seen a lot of okay. He uh, has a, a lot of freaking cosplays. I've seen a lot of freaking Genshin Impact cosplays yeah. over the past. Not two a lot years. of people cosplay him. I don't know why. <laughs> um, if you don't, if, when you don't play, it's really hard to explain who he is. He's a I feel this. <laughs> I, I give me a minute. I think I, yeah, you can probably Google it. He has like sandy, sandy blonde hair. It's like short, but it's also pulled back into. A oh, okay, yeah, I, like I, I, I have. Uh, for anyone who's wondering, this is. God, <laughs> yeah. Every time I see, hear these new characters and I hear people cosplay, yeah. like a lot of, and I'm, and yeah. I, and I, and just for a note, I let everyone say one f word. <laughs> I, I keep it PG. Well, I also, I also barely swear on my channel anyway, so I'm. That used to is it. a lot of detail. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get most of it 3D printed. That's a lot I ain't of, making all that. That's a lot of freaking blue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's going to be um, at SoccerCon, hopefully. If not, I have Yunjin, but I did that at KomoriCon. I kind of want to you know, do something else. <laughs> Wait, so you don't Yunjin? Yunjin. Uh, I, I think... Y-U-N-G-I-N. Yeah, -I -I -N. 
J I N E N. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Albedo is a future cosplay. Who? Uh, yeah. Who's the other future cosplay? Uh, Ash. <laughs> Ash. Oh, cool. Well, yeah. Anyway. Um, I'm gonna be doing a video at Soccer Con. Uh, I just got new mics too that are clip-on wireless mics. Uh, oh, you doing... mean uh, like these? Uh, yeah, except way smaller. <laughs> this is this is my for anyone watching who's ever doing cosplay vlogs or uh, um convention interviews these are your best friend because these are better than these things yeah i just literally watched two videos where you use or a video where you use both of those <laughs> <laughs> like that is way better um but no these ones it comes with it's i don't remember the brand i just bought them they're like 150 bucks it comes with two mics and a receiver and the receiver is like this big okay and it's a wireless yeah. one yeah, and they're they're completely wireless. Like you know how like with those you would have that clip to your belt, and then you have mm -hmm. the wire running up, and then you These got are... the receiver. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's a nice. That's actually a nice small receiver. It's 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 fun. I'm not trying to. I'm not well, trying the, to like make the DJI I want the the DJI ones like three, and the road ones are like three times bigger than that. Oh yeah, no that 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 thing. Yeah. I, I love that thing. Yeah, but the the ones that I bought it comes with two, so you can do interviews, and you can just clip both of them. And they both nice. go to the same receiver. Um nice. and they don't they don't have the wire that goes to your belt. It's just the thing itself. Yeah. And I just tested them out. They're really good. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean the sound quality on the one I bought called the I mean it says MPH5. The the sound quality? Like I can be like standing right here, someone next to me, someone next to me, and you can like I don't have to like move yeah. the mic near their no, I heard on the video. Oh my god, <laughs> you were yeah. like, you had it pointed at someone else, and you could hear the other person on the other side of you. Best fifty bucks I ever spent. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. See, and, and and I'm sure you can agree. You don't always when you're vlogging, or like if you're professionally vlogging for a con, because I've seen a lot of con videos yeah. on YouTube. You don't always have to go the expensive route, like cheap. No, like I you said, can use your you have a phone. Use like it. I said, this was like fifty bucks. This these two things were like twenty bucks. Yeah, no, uh, 50 <gasps> bucks. Oh, this, okay. well, this goes right into a headphone jack. Oh, nice. I don't know how well you can see that on there, but yeah, it goes right I into can, a headphone jack. I've seen those. I want to get, uh, yeah, I want to get one of the bigger ones that you can, like, like, you can, like, if you're in the background, you can, yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they also make those that go straight into, like, a, um, an iPhone whatever those are, the lightning jack, and Ooh. they make them with USB-C as well. Nice. So you, if someone wants to use like a selfie stick, they can vlog with their phone it perfectly. Like they don't even have to do anything. Vlogs don't have to be edited. No, true. So, sometimes, sometimes I know they edit. Um, yeah. But I think I would much rather watch the person doing the thing uh -huh. than seeing so much cinematic stuff. Like that's what I, like I'm torn because I like doing the cinematic stuff with my gimbal and everything. Mm -hmm. But I would like to be able to walk around and talk with my camera going, which I can oh, and, now do with those mics. And, and, there, and there's nothing wrong with like your A and V videos where they where there it's the cosplayer showcase yeah. or they're well just... those ones those ones are specifically meant to be like that. But like oh, yeah. I put those in my vlogs too. No, nice. but I sometimes overdo it and don't realize it. <laughs> <laughs> or especially like I, I won't think about it and I won't film some mm -hmm. things, so I have to make up for it. So it's not like a like a four minute video. Right. So I have to so I have to add more of that stuff in there when I don't really want to. I I get you. Um. So the next question, um, it's a question I uh, another question I was going to ask. What are your thoughts on bringing a convention exit buddy with you? Basically, bringing a friend who's who's not really into it, but it's like good to have that support. So like, if you get like you say you get nervous, overwhelmed, it's like, hey, can we like go else somewhere else in the con or like leave for a few and then just come back? Well, what are your thoughts so, on that? So. I used to go with my dad, and that would be kind of the same situation. He doesn't – he's not, like, into cosplay, or, or he's not really into anime. He and likes there, comic and, stuff, but a little as, bit. As I always but, say, there was nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and but but he liked seeing the costumes and stuff. So whenever it was like, can we go do something else? But yeah, sure. You know, So it, that's a good idea. But I think it would be probably better to make sure they at least like stuff there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like if it's if it's someone like – like a 12 year old they have to be with there with with some type of adult oh yeah so a parent usually has to go with them 
Right. Because they're not usually going to just let them go with friends. That are oh, like, no, 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 no. They're, they're no, not no. going to have 18 year old friends. No, so, have, have, have a parent or guardian who's, yeah. uh, who's over the age of yeah. 18 with you. Exactly. And so that those people might not like that stuff. So that might be the same situation as like, that sounded like that's what you were asking. Like, well, I mean, I guess also if or, it's like if it's best to have like a, a friend go with you to the oh, con. Yeah. No, it, it is it is always a good idea to have people yeah. with you, especially if you're going to a, a, a con. You know, uh, your very first con, and you don't know what yeah. to do. Well, also, like say for soccer con and Komori cons, they're in big cities. There's a lot of drug addicts and homeless outside. Yeah. So if you're not with somebody. There stuff could some bad stuff could happen, and you don't want that. No, that's no, why no, you no. know there's always, you know, it's always better to have numbers on your side, mm -hmm. or at least witnesses, <laughs> at the very least. Right. So, it, I would I would say if you're gonna go to a convention, always go with friends. Oh no, whole, I I wholeheartedly agree. If you if you can help it, never go alone. No, no, it's, no. Yeah, um, especially especially if you're a smaller woman, they get preyed on so hard that. Like, I feel so bad for some of the ones I see walking. I've had to walk people to, to their hotel and stuff. And that's really I'm nice like, of you. Yeah, I'm like, hey, you're alone. You probably shouldn't be walking to your hotel. Do you want me to walk you to the front door? No, it's always like, it's always best to ask if they need help and everything, you know. Yeah. Um, well, my friend, well, I was trying to do that with one of my friends, and she was like, what are you talking about? I have a pocket knife on me. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's, like, <laughs> she's like, no one's going to mess with me. Don't worry. I, go, I was like, yeah, I, okay. I, I, I have a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, I'm not afraid to use it. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> she's my friend. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just trying to be nice. <laughs> nice. Um. So um, another question is kind of cosplay and prop related. Yeah. Um, What advice would you want to give to a cosplayer, first time cosplayer who wants to build they're very like their very first cosplay, like a big build cosplays. Cause I know there are some people who look at these big known cosplayers and they think that's what cosplay is. Yeah. So I actually also made a video on this. Um, don't <laughs> for your first one, uh, practice first. The, the first, the, the first thing you want to do is get the cheap EVA foam mats. Practice as much as you can. Don't buy paint. Don't buy primer. Don't buy any of that stuff. Get your contact cement. You can just get one of those little tiny bottles of DAP contact cement and get the get the floor mats. Build random stuff. Don't make it cohesive. Just learn how to cut and how to and how to apply and how much glue you need on certain certain aspects. Because if you're doing something with curves, you're gonna need more glue to hold it, you know, things like that. So practice first. Once you start getting used to doing all of that, also practice safety, wear dust masks and respirators and stuff. goggles and everything <laughs> yeah uh i have an actual respirator that i wear for like the, the valve ones oh for, i've seen um, those ones for fumes and then i use regular over the head dust masks the the white ones uh for dremels um uh, yeah don't even worry about buying any of that stuff yet. <laughs> maybe a heat gun so you can start forming stuff but uh other than that just start small make random garbage that you're just going to throw away later <laughs> once you start figuring out how things go together, how forms work with foam, then you can start worrying about <laughs> making your stuff. And then I would say you have a friend, and if it's like, say it's chest armor, there's no way to make it fit you without making it fit you, right? I, I've seen the whole plastic wrap and... Uh, yeah, and, have and, a friend and, do that. <laughs> I've seen the plastic wrap with a tape. Yeah, plastic and wrap it. and duct tape or masking tape works too, but it comes off easier, but duct tape sticks. So it's also more expensive sometimes. <laughs> Go to the dollar store. They have them for a dollar. Um, then uh, obviously do more than what you're going to like. Like if you're going to do like Saiyan armor, let's say. And so mm -hmm. there's little straps here and then it's the rest. Make it like really thick on the shoulder so that you have enough room to draw, obviously. And if if it's going to be like symmetrical, you can only mm -hmm. do one half. But do both halves anyway. If one half turns out better, use that half. <laughs> I've learned that the hard way. So... Uh, that's basically it. And then you're pretty much good to go. And then just learn how to use the tools correctly, which you can find on YouTube anywhere. Like Kamui tells you, Kamui and um, Punish Props both have tons of tutorials on how to use things. I mean, like Kamui even, ha yeah, even has her own book now. Yeah. Well, actually, both of them do. They both have multiple books. Nice. So, and, and uh, Punish Props, they actually live up here in Seattle. Nice. So, yeah. So they're really cool. I got to meet them at SummerCon. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Um. So next question, um, co uh, con convention and cosplay experiences. Um, co uh, cosplay experience first. 
Have you ever had any cosplays rip, snap, tear, break, fall <laughs> apart? Yes. Whether you were getting ready for the con at the con or having a picture taken? Uh all three. <laughs> um oh. so so again, one of them is the horror story one, but um I can just mention it and then whenever we get to that point again, whatever. Um so beforehand, my uh, my Marluxia cosplay, I actually brought it to another convention that same year in 2012. Uh, it was called AkiCon. They don't exist anymore. <laughs> I've heard stories about AkiCon. Yeah, they're horrible. They don't exist anymore. Um, I was trying to wear that costume that year. Wait, well, Marluxia? Boots, yeah, the boots ripped on me. Ooh. Yeah, they were um, uh, the ones you can buy on. I think I bought them on CosplayFoo.com or something. And the that's same an old. Split, that's an old site. Yeah, they don't. I don't, I don't even know if they exist anymore. <laughs> um, but the the they they have a seam that runs down the middle of both the front and back. Um, the one right over your foot that popped open, and we couldn't fix it. And you got to have any way to fix it. I mean, that, that's what you get for going on. I mean, yeah. anyone always, <laughs> yeah. do your, always do your. They research. were like they were like forty dollars. So like, yeah, always of course. Do your, always do your research on cosplay, like from websites. If you can, if you don't have the money to go on Etsy, I'm sure you can agree. Do your uh, do your research when you're going yes. on, like when you're going like off of Amazon, eBay, or these cosplay. Yeah. There's there's a all, few. They're that, all mass produced. Yeah. There, there's a few that know the like the people know not to go to, like Mick costumes. There just don't go to them. <laughs> but other, most of the other ones are fine. Mick costumes like is literally racist. So Ooh. yeah. So I I steer people away from them as much as possible. But I haven't had that problem with pretty much any of the others. Well, that's good. Yeah. But as, as, far but, as, but know, boots, as far as the question goes, <laughs> boots are, I guess, which brings me to my next question because I know you both cosplay as male and female characters. Yeah. Um, when you're wearing shoes, depending on the type of character, would you say it's best to, um, try the shoes first before you actually go to the con? Like, oh god, yes. what's the what's the word, the term? Break them in. Or... Yes, think break them in. Yeah. Yes, would you yes. recommend breaking in shoes? Dep yes. Even it, whether that care, whether it's you know wearing heels or you know, especially if it's heels. And I'm sure you've had and, that and especially and especially if you're a guy and don't know how to walk in them. Oh, yeah, especially if you're like if you're a guy cosplaying as Two B from Near Automata. Yeah, exactly. And she has those like stiletto things. If you don't know how to walk in those, huh? You better learn, or you're <laughs> gonna fall a lot. Or your feet's uh, gonna hurt. Yeah. Um. I have a. I don't. Did I? I don't think I sent you any of my crossplay stuff, but. I had one where I literally had heels like that. They weren't that big. They weren't. They were like three and a half inches. They were like probably like that. It's not like yeah. They, no, they were. They were big. They just weren't. They just weren't like like near automata big. <laughs> um, and I didn't know how to walk in them. The first time I used them was a horrible experience. What was the what was the character? Uh, it's not a character. It's an OC. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I can send you pictures of that. Okay. I don't think you can see the heels because of the way that I posed. Because I had a scythe. Because I like sites, <laughs> and the way that I pose with you know with the site, there's only a couple poses you can do, and so many of them didn't really show the back of the shoes. So, hmm. um, but the very first time I did that, I was in a lot of pain. Oof! I'll I'll bet. I mean, your your Marluxia shoes breaking, and um, yeah. now to the one we kind of discussed: cosplay horror stories, <laughs> yeah. convention horror stories. Yeah. Something that made you like, did that actually just happen, or what the? <laughs> kind of yeah scenario. uh there's one uh there, i mean other than like the obvious stuff it's like the shoes breaking or mm -hmm. you know um i also did have somebody like take over a whole photo shoot like 15 minutes early we got all pissed at him and stuff and it was just it was crazy uh but that's nothing those are those aren't anything those aren't really horror stories uh or my or i'm an idiot and i spilled soda on myself like a dumbass but well, i mean that that that, <laughs> that i mean that, that, that yeah. i consider that a cosplay mishap or just, yeah you know... but i had other shirts so it, it was fine <laughs> um but the one last year at kamori con um i was the shomaru from inuyasha Ooh, i actually saw that on your uh your on your page yeah um so everything was falling apart <laughs> the entire time so it took us four and a half hours to get ready and we were out there for maybe three hours before everything just fell apart. Oh, no. Yeah. The the armor, I had to remake the entire armor because the one they sent was all messed up and incorrect anyway. So, But uh, the chest piece, uh, I I used like, you know, the pin back, like the back of a pin where it's like a safety pin on the back. Mm -hmm. I used those and put them on and they kept coming back off. So we had to go to the cosplay repair 
uh, it, right when we got there, we had to go to cosplay repair and super glue a bunch of safety pins. On they, it. Yeah, they're 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 a lifesaver in my opinion. Yeah. It was horrible, and so throughout the convention, they kept coming undone, and the big thing on the right shoulder kept trying to like it was tied in, like there was ties on it to make it stay on. But it kept pulling the sleeve down like this. Oh, it was no. like, stop. I had to hold it like this the entire time. It was horrible. It just walking and, around the con. Yeah. yeah. And I had a sword in my hand. And his <laughs> so, sword is pretty massive, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I had it, it's like it's like trunks on steroids. Oh jeez. <laughs> it's huge. That thing was almost as tall as me. Almost and like Sephiroth's sword. Yeah. And then I had two in the belt. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is annoying. Jeez. And so nothing stayed. And then around the three, three and a half hour mark, my wig started falling off. There was nothing we could do there. <sighs> it just completely came off. And then everything bad happened. And I got all mad. And I, to get it off, I couldn't get any of the, My friend tied them in the knots in the, the little thing. <laughs> there was ones, there was ones on each side of the of the waist that held the, the kimono thing together. And then one the one up here for the for the thing. And I didn't know she tied him in knots. So I had to rip them off. Oh no. Like I sat there and just tore it off. Just and I had yanked to rip the them thing apart. off. Yeah. Oh, so there's no. giant holes in it now. Uh. And then since and since I was mad, I was like super mad. Like I haven't been this mad in a long time. And I threw the wig across the room and stuff. And basically, like, Hulk smash. Yeah, basically. And <laughs> um, so this year that same friend was go was doing Echidna from um ReZero season Ooh. two. And uh, we all did a ReZero group this year, uh, nice. and uh, so I brought I brought Reinhard back, and um, she was trying to use my wig because it was really long, it was the perfect length, and it was so tangled that she couldn't fix it. And her mom is a hairstylist in a beauty. And her mom and her mom is just like, yeah, there's there's yeah this statement. yeah. Her mom <laughs> who does that for a living couldn't do it. Oh damn! <laughs> it was that bad. I mean, wigs are not made. Wigs like cosplay wigs, they're not made from the same material like y your hair or my hair. No, they're they're plastic. They're literally just plastic. And props to those who make those glass tile type wigs, those shiny looking gem diamond wigs. Like Land Illustrious wigs? Yeah. God. I want to know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um uh, aside from cosplay, any great any fun cosplay convention moments like it was something oh. like yeah, something like you. It's like it was kind of it made your day. Oh. The, so at uh, Comoric on twenty nineteen, nothing will top this. So uh, my favorite voice actor was at Comoric on twenty nineteen. She hasn't been up here in like since almost before I did conventions. So <laughs> this is the first time I got to was able to go and meet her. And uh, so she does. She's Brittany Karbowski. She does like Rimuru from the Slime anime. Uh, she's Black Star in Soul Eater. Uh, I, know who Black, I know who Black Star yeah, is. Yeah, so she's she's a bunch of characters. She's like one of the big, big time voice actors. Um, and so I was cosplaying Rimuru that year. That was the first year that I had it. And so we went to go meet her. We were the only people in like almost the entire line that were cosplaying, which is freaking weird. That never happens. <laughs> so we get up there. So and my friend's cosplaying Soe, the one with the purple hair and he's like the ninja guy. Mm -hmm. Uh he so we 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 both went up and um uh she took a picture of us on her phone. I was like, I'm on my favorite voice actor's phone. <laughs> it was awesome. And then I got like a whole bunch of stuff signed <laughs> that weekend. Nice. So you can, some of it's back here. I got like these two slime posters here. I I, 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 see, I, I can see yeah. it. Yeah. So all that stuff signed by her, as well as a couple others. But uh that was like the thing. But later on that day. So we had also a Shuna, who was the the princess girl with the two horns, and a Shion, who's the, the big big, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um. So so we had those two with us, and uh, some other people came up, and we we all got this big group together somehow, just out of nowhere, and everyone was taking pictures, and she's and she starts walking by and starts taking pictures. Ah. Uh... Like, I'm like, no, Brittany, get in the pictures with us. And so she does, and she starts. I love, I love when voice <sighs> actors get in like a get in with like the a big yeah. group of like the of a of a uh, of the, from the same anime. That's exactly. pretty exactly. Cool. It was amazing. She started doing the voice and everything. <sighs> it was, it was amazing. Nice. Um. So before we end this, any last minute advice you want to give to anyone who's considering on wanting to go to their first convention cosplay? Just just random stuff you want to throw out there. Mostly just do it. Just 
do it. <laughs> just do <laughs> yeah, it. That, I was going to do that, but I didn't want to. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it, seriously, just just start. Buy, buy something. doesn't really matter. Just go to like Easy Cosplay or Amazon or whatever and buy a costume. Go to a convention and wear it. Bam, you're a cosplayer. <laughs> there you go. You don't even have to go to the convention. Do TikTok, do YouTube, do whatever. As long as you're wearing the costume, you're a cosplayer. A lot of people think that you have to like make your own stuff or go no, to the conventions. You don't and, have to do any of that. And there's and then there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, yes, that's that's an aspect, but that's not the aspect. That's not the only thing. You know, you you can you can do this without having to do all that. So as long as you wear the costume, you're cosplaying already. You're you don't have to get into the community. You're now in it. You know, I mean the, that's that's yeah. that's and, fair. Yeah, and if you want to learn stuff, YouTube is free. Yeah, <laughs> so, YouTube's your best friend. Yeah, yeah. That's literally why I do tutorials and stuff, because I know that there's people who who don't know how to make stuff and they would like to learn. So I put them on my channel and, and I do a lot of stuff that people aren't doing. Like like I have like well, obviously people are doing cloud and stuff, but they're not doing it the same way I did. That you know they're, they're doing it their own way, and maybe someone will find my way easier. Maybe someone will find someone else's way easier. You know that's just an extra option. But then I also have stuff like, like my soldier sword. Like since I have all the stuff here, I might as well. <laughs> might so, as well. Yeah, I'm dropping stuff. Ooh. So like this one. Oh, the first. Um, yeah, the soldier uh, swords from the, Final Fantasy VII. The one that uh, the one that Zach uses. Yeah. Well, all the soldiers use it, <laughs> but the only reason the Buster Sword exists is because NGO used. It. I know too much about Final Fantasy, uh, anyway, uh, but like, so no one does this sword. I so, don't think I. I think I've seen like a few, but like the fact yeah, that exactly. that's that's like, I, I mean, screen accuracy. I know a lot of people who want to do a screen accurate cosplay will, you know, go online, watch the watch the movie, the show, whatever, just to make sure yeah. they get all the specs right. I mean, I'll do that too, but. It just depends. But then, like, like I don't know anybody who's done Black Stars. <laughs> These are Black Stars sites. I have both of them. <laughs> so, I don't know a lot of people who have tutorials for these. So, if someone wanted to see them, or someone wanted to make these, I made them. Someone can do that. Nice. So, this is kind of hard to put away. <laughs> Oh no, it, you're you're perfectly fine. But that no, that I, that's some that's some good advice. And again, for those who are listening and watching, you know, be sure to check out Jay's uh, YouTube channel for you know tips, tricks, and his blogs. And who knows, you may get to be featured in one of his future blogs. Yeah, if you go to the conventions they go to, and you cause me something really out there, even if it's something, especially if it's underground and unknown, I love filming yeah. that. This also, I mean, by the time this comes out, this will be out in. February of 2020. This will so, I mean, I know I, know, I I know I just shouldn't announce when this comes out, but this will come out in February of 2023. Yeah. So yeah, it'll be out for it won't be out for a while. Yeah. But, well, I mean, that's what I do too. So. <laughs> but again, Jay, uh, I want to again thank you for coming on to cosplay contacts, get into the cosplayer, talk about it. all the cosplays you did, the props you made, and I'm you know looking forward to seeing you at a future con, man. Yeah, thank you for having me, dude. Of course. As always, I'm Wayne the Unknown. Thank you for listening, and until next time, thank you for watching.